So if you follow MTD's channels, you would have seen a video uh, a month or so ago that was shot at Star GB. I was talking to Alec Warner about an application and a turnkey project that they had just, or were just about to commission. And here it is, uh, I'm at TNC Precision in Essex with Steve Westall. Uh, Steve, you purchased this star machine for the application we looked at. We did, um, yeah. Just to start with, tell us about how it all happened and how it came about. Well, basically, we were looking for uh, probably another MY machine. We, we were up to capacity on the machines that we've got. This job landed on my desk, which I at first dis discounted. It's a job that's been, a component that's been made in China. We looked at it, we thought, there's no way we can get around to that time. But basically, uh, for, for two days, two weeks maybe, it probably stayed on my desk. And uh, Star walked in one day, the rep from Star walked in, and I, I picked this component up and I said to him, have a look at that one, what can you do? I'm looking at the time between three and four minutes. What can you do? I've, can a 32 machine do it? Um, they went away, they came back to me within a couple of couple of days really and they said, yeah, we think we can we can handle that. We think we can get a, a cycle time of around about, they said about four minutes ten at the time. And we thought, well, the first question was, will it run lights out? Can we trust that to run lights out over the, over long weekends? They said, yep, no problem, we think, no, no worries at all, but you do need a 38 machine to do this on. So it's an expensive machine, but it's got great capability. So were you surprised that they could actually, because you, when you say MY, you're talking about a fixed head solution. Now, we were, th yeah. th this is obviously a sliding head machine, but you have the guide bush and the non-guide bush, so it gives you a bit of flexibility as well. But were you surprised that they could get the cycle time down to where would make it pay? Yeah, obviously we were, but I think the deal breaker was the um, balanced milling cycles on there. We can obviously, um, it, 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 along, along with the fixed head uh, facility on the machine, which, which opens up a whole new uh, area for us because we can, then use, we can now apply this machine to other components we make in a workshop. Um, but yeah, the actual cycle time, to, to, to achieve that cycle time, we, we thought was pretty good. Four minutes was probably the top end of where I wanted to be looking. But, um, and you think a lot of, uh, they got it down to that as a result of, this has obviously got a turret on this machine as well as an opposing platen. You are doing a lot of balance milling, so you're yes. doubling up. Yeah, we are. The only, the, the only drawback was we had expected it to be, uh, there'd be more work being achieved on the second spindle. That's not the case because of the, the, the cost of the material involved. We needed to go for a smaller diameter bar. Once, once we got our heads around that and we got looked at the, the balance milling, then we looked at the tooling that was, was going to come with it. We thought we had somewhere that we could, we could work with. That coupled with the fact that we could run it lights out, we were, we were in with a good shout. All I needed then from the customer was a decent order to allow me to go out and purchase the machine. Which subsequently happened and then you went to Star and, and obviously you ordered the machine. Yep. Um, how did the, the whole uh, turnkey work? You know, how, tell us about the success from start to finish. Well, really, we, we needed to, the, 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 the components are obviously being uh, purchased in China. There's always a problem logistically if um, components uh, could be on the water when they need them. You know, there's long delivery times, long lead times. So it's not a very responsive way to buy it. The customer needed to be able to get hold of components quickly if, they, if they'd run out of stock or if there was a problem with the components they had. So when we went back to them, we, we needed to get this up and running by around about April time this year. Originally it was sort of um, February time, but we said that really wasn't achievable. So the turnkey package was, um, that came about because we needed to, we wouldn't normally buy a turnkey package, I, I'll be perfectly honest with you, but we needed to get the machine, we didn't know the machine, we needed this to land and we needed to hit the floor running with it, which we pretty much did. Now it's here, they achieved what they said they were going to achieve yeah. in the time scales that, that you wanted it, but you've actually, since then, you've managed to take even more off the cycle time. Yeah, I think when it, when it originally hit here, we were doing about four minutes, ten seconds, four minutes, close to that anyway, and I think we're down now about three minutes, thirteen seconds. A, a hell of a sophisticated bit of kit, this, this SV38R. Were you surprised that the type of application we're talking now, most people would look at, and they did on the last video, and think, well, that's for a milling machine. But it's all changing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is changing. We looked at it on a five-axis, and to be to be fair, our next purchase will be a five-axis milling machine. But for this capacity, for this type of component, uh, when we looked at five-axis, that that couldn't touch this. Couldn't get anywhere near that time. 
it's just the, the balanced milling cycles on this that, that make it such a such a competitive machine and it's going to open up a world of, of work for us. Did you ever have the worry about maintaining the precision of the part though? I mean you talk about running 20 hours a day, yeah. your doors open here, you know a hot summer's day, growth of the machine, all of those elements, were they factors in your mind? Yeah they were but we'd recently bought a, um, a 12 millimeter machine from, from, from Star and we're holding uh, five micron limit on that. This component isn't particularly tied up. Uh, I think you're talking about 0.1 limits on it pretty much everywhere. That, that, and we ran that over a four day cycle and it moved 01 over four days. So we weren't really concerned about that. Oh, there's always a concern. There's always a concern if you're going to damage the part on the second spindle on pickups and that, but none of that has been an issue. What about the material grade? Because that's another point as well. Yeah. How, how is it going to handle when you're, when you're cutting? What is it? The material is uh, aluminium 7075, so it's an aircraft grade. Um, it, is, it isn't a cheap material. Um, if they could have picked a more expensive one, you know, then good for them. But this, this was about as far as we wanted to go. So the material is, is a, a big cost problem for us. So looking at this part here, I mean I could either think either make it in that direction or uh, in, in, in that plane or is it all oh, sorry in that way. Yeah. Now to me that would then impact on the diameter of the bar. Did you have yeah. that same dilemma? We did have the same dilemma. We did a uh, cost comparison. Um, we could have held it we could have held it this way round and taken it out of a larger diameter bar. The, the machine will just about handle that. That's on the limit of the machine. But the real, uh, we would then be looking at a 40, 42 mil diameter bar to get it that way. We would have saved time because we would have done an awful lot more work on the second spindle. But when you, it doesn't stack up for material costs. So eventually, and to be fair, the tooling would have been a lot more expensive to hold it that way. And, and this is quite simple, the way it's held, it, it comes out of the machine that way. That wasn't my original way. I, I originally thought it would be done that way around, coming out of the machine that way around. Star have gone away, machined it that way. Collet comes over the top, picks it up on there. Basically, all we do on the second spindle is face that off. There's very little work on the second spindle. So the, the choice was, if you went for the bigger bar diameter, you could have got a saving, because you'd have done lo a lot more on the back spindle, wouldn't yes, you? we would, yeah. That, that would, the, the, the saving would have been on the back spindle. That, 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 I'm not saying we haven't discounted that. It depends how busy we get with the machine. It may be at a later date that we want to rethink the way we do this um, because we're already looking at jobs that we can put on this machine. And I'm, I'm already looking and, and putting pressure on the guy to, to get, get this job off the machine so we can get something else on there. So that, and that's the way it's going, but that's... Uh, pretty exciting, isn't it, this machine? And how many opportunities it can open up for your company? Yeah, it opens up a world of opportunities for us. It's, um, it's a... The, the, the fixed head application of it is a game changer for the machine in our books because we've got a lot of work around there that we've never been able to consider on a, on a, on a sliding head machine because purely because of the, the physics of the machine. You can't draw it back and push it out once it's been machined. But if we can now hold it and then we can hold it on the second spindle and re-machine over components, then that, that is a big plus for us. I really appreciate your time, Steve. It concludes the story uh, from our first video perfectly. So thanks a lot and good luck going okay. forward. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.